Hi everyone, this is the Dialog Manager tutorial for Pixel Crusher's Dialog System for Unity. In this tutorial, we'll set up a Dialog Manager. The Dialog Manager is the main component that coordinates activity in the Dialog System. It maintains a master Dialog database, holds settings for subtitles, cutscene sequences, and user interaction, and coordinates between the database and the user interface. To create a Dialog Manager, the easiest way is to drag in the prefab from Dialog System Prefabs. Alternatively, you can select Game Object, Create Other, Dialog System, Dialog Manager, or Window, Dialog System, Wizards, Dialog Manager to go through a step-by-step -step configuration wizard. The prefab is handy because it's pre-configured and it comes with some generic UIs already that you can use right away and customize later. The Dialog Manager game object has a Dialog System Controller component. You can actually have multiple Dialog System controllers. Maybe you're creating a split-screen multiplayer game where each player can engage in conversations all at the same time. But for the most part, you'll only have one. In scripts, you can reference this component using the Static Dialog Manager class. See the script reference for more information on that. First, let's set the initial database. This is the dialog database that gets loaded into the master database when the game starts. You can add additional databases by script or using a visual scripting action or using the extra databases component. Now let's look at display settings. The dialog UI field lets you specify which dialog UI to use for conversations. If it's blank, the dialog manager will search its children for an active dialog UI component, in this case the generic one. If we wanted to assign a different one, we'd drag it into that field. Since we're using a Unity UI prefab, the Dialog Manager will warn that it may need to create a canvas if one doesn't already exist. We'll hit OK. It adds the Dialog UI to the canvas and also creates a Unity UI event system. The localization settings are used for localization, which is covered in a separate tutorial. The subtitle settings specify how subtitles are displayed during conversations. Show NPC subtitles during line shows the subtitle text when NPCs are delivering their lines. Show NPC subtitles with responses shows that same subtitle text while the player response menu is active. Show PC subtitles during line shows the PC's subtitle text after the player has selected a response from the response menu. By default this is off because the text is typically already on the response menu. There are some other options here that we can skip over. However, subtitle cares per second and min subtitle seconds specify default durations that the subtitles are shown. Continue button specifies how the continue button is used in dialog UIs. By default, it's not used at all, but there are several options for when to show and require continue button clicks. In camera settings, you can set a camera to use for cutscene sequences. This can be a game object or a prefab. If it's a prefab, it will be automatically instantiated. If you don't assign anything, cutscene sequences will use the current main camera, which is whatever camera in the scene is tagged main camera. Camera angles 
is the game object or prefab that defines camera angles for cutscene sequences. Camera angles are the subject of a separate tutorial. If you don't assign anything here, the dialog system will use the default camera angles prefab located in prefabs camera angles. If a dialog entry doesn't define a cutscene sequence, the dialog system will use default sequence for it. The default sequence simply delays for an amount of time based on the length of the subtitle text. Always Force Response Menu always shows the player response menu even if the player only has one option in that menu. If you untick this, the conversation will autoplay that option instead. Include Invalid Entries shows entries whose conditions are not true, and those entries are shown as disabled buttons. Response Timeout allows you to add timeouts to the response menu. If this is greater than zero, a timer will count down, and if the player hasn't selected a response by the end of the time, it will take an action specified by the response timeout action. If this is zero, the player has unlimited time. QTE buttons define the button names that are associated with QuickTime events. By default, QuickTime Event 0 is triggered by Fire 1, and QuickTime Event 1 is triggered by Fire 2. You can add additional QTE buttons or change the buttons here. Cancel and Cancel Conversation specify the key and or button that the player can use to cancel a cutscene sequence or exit from a conversation. Bark settings allow you to override some behavior specifically for barks, such as allowing barks during conversations and the duration that barks are shown on screen. If bark cares per second and min bark seconds are zero, it will use the subtitle cares per second and min subtitle seconds. Similarly, alert settings let you specify some overrides for alerts. If alert cares per second and min alert seconds are also zero, they'll also use the subtitle settings. Persistent data settings specify what data is included in the persistent data system, which is used for saved games. You can mouse over the various options here to see the tooltips and understand how they work. The Allow Simultaneous Conversations checkbox allows simultaneous conversations. By default, the dialog system only allows one conversation to run at a time. Include SIM status includes information with each dialog entry that specifies whether it's untouched, has been shown in the dialog UI, or has been offered in a response menu. Don't destroy on load allows the dialog manager to survive scene changes. This is important because the dialog manager holds the runtime state of the dialog database. By allowing it to survive across scene changes, you can keep the values of the variables and quests that you've changed in previous scenes. And allow only one instance ensures that the dialog manager runs as a singleton so that you don't have conflicts between multiple dialog managers. The debug level dropdown is very handy for looking under the hood in what the dialog system is doing. If you ever want to know what game objects are being associated with an active conversation or get other insight into how conditions are being used in the conversation, change the debug level temporarily to info. This will log a lot of information to the console, or if you're making a development build, it will log that information to the output log file in your build. And that's the tutorial for the Dialog Manager. Thanks for watching.